one of the often overlooked things when installing a cam is piston to valve clearance. Uh, as the piston's traveling up on uh, the exhaust stroke and then back down on its intake stroke, there's a situation called valve overlap where both the intake and exhaust valves are open. Performance can shafts often have the intake and exhaust valves open at the same time much longer, which is part of what gets into a lopy idle and uh, velocity and where the engine makes power. The problem is you got to make sure that the piston isn't going to ever hit the valve when the lifter's pumped up and this is operating at high RPM. Uh, so it's something we need to check. Uh, it's actually a pretty simple procedure. Get your uh, short block assembled, put your cylinder head on, and then you got to use a, a lighter spring. Sometimes you can use just a damper. Uh, there are actually checking springs available so that you make sure you don't compress the lifter at all because the lifters aren't pumped up with oil when it's not running. Crank the engine over and uh, compress a piece of modeling clay, silly putty, something similar to that. And you'll see where the valve has dimpled into the, that clay. Pull the head back off, take a dial calipers, measure how much clearance you have. So we got 145 or so on our exhaust. And 210 or so on the intake. Uh, generally, you want about 100 thousands on the intake, 125 on the exhaust. Uh, there are some stipulations as to piston, rod, valve material, uh, but generally your camshaft manufacturer will tell you uh, in the instructions what you should be aiming for. The other thing to consider is we didn't use our head gasket. Um, your head gasket's not supposed to be torqued down more than once. Um, some people prefer to put the head gasket in there and then calculate how much crush there will be on the head gasket. I prefer to work the other way, that way you don't risk damaging the head gasket. So we'll add our compressed thickness to our measurements. Uh, I haven't looked it up in this particular case, but uh, any gasket manufacturer publishes all the compressed thicknesses for their head gaskets so that you can do this as well as some other math for compression ratio and quench area. Uh, whenever you install cylinder heads, it's always a good idea to check that the machine shop didn't leave any burrs around the bores, on the deck surface, on the surface of the head. Uh, in this case, these heads had been on this engine before in this car. Uh, we used a uh, Felpro gasket set, uh, which does not require a retorque uh, in a regular street motor that's relatively low power. It'll be just fine. Higher performance engines often need a, a, be a better gasket that will require a retorque. Uh, there's two dowels that actually help you guide the uh, head onto a small lock Chevy. So you wanna be sure to try and set it on as straight as possible on those dowels. You don't wanna slide it around a bunch. Uh, if you do, you could nick the surface, end up with a coolant leak. Uh, once you've got the head on there, it's time to install the bolts. Uh, we used ARP head bolts on this, and with ARP bolts, it's always very critical to use their torque specs and to follow their directions on how to seal or lubricate the threads. Uh, in a Chevy, most of your head bolts go into a water jacket, so it's important to use improved sealant. Uh, ARP does make a sealant for that. Uh, once you've got all your bolts threaded and sealed, uh, follow the torque sequence uh, that GM provided. Uh, basically start in the middle and work your way out, uh, again to ARP's torque specs, and repeat the process for the other side of the motor. So these cylinder heads on this particular engine had been on uh, the engine in this car before, but with the cam swap we had to change valve springs, uh, which is very important because as lift and duration increase, the valve's ability to close gets more difficult, and you want the valves to float and stay open because then you run into at the, at the best performance problems at the worst catastrophic engine failure when pistons and valves end up meeting at high speed. Uh, replacing valve springs is pretty simple. Compress the spring, uh, release the keeper, which is two wedge-shaped pieces. Take the old stuff off. And in this case, we got new springs, new retainers, and new keepers. So we replace all that. Um, depending on your application, sometimes it's important to check seat load, make sure it's in spec. Uh, in this case, for this street motor, Everything's going to be all right there. Next, Trevor installs a set of new CopCam's Ultra Pro Magnum steel stud mounted rocker arms. The roller tips reduce friction, and the black oxide finish is intended to minimize corrosion for durability. The arms are installed on the studs, then, Trevor adjusts them by turning the push rod until it's snug or at zero lash. Then, the locks are tightened down. Now that the long block is assembled, uh, we sent it to Jeff so he could paint it in Eastwood's high temp ceramic engine paint. 
Uh, we painted the engine in incorrect Chevrolet orange, uh, which is the color that the engine would have been when this car was new. Uh, we decided, since the cylinder heads are aluminum, that we kind of wanted to show that off, and we used uh, Eastwood's aluminum uh, engine paint. It gives a pretty good color. It's close to what aluminum looks like, but it won't oxidize and turn chalky like aluminum tends to. Jeff also painted all the, uh, the sheet metal for the engine, water pump, and the balancer, and we're going to be installing those next.